Hi everyone, Dr. B here. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode of Ask the Dentist. So uh, small bite today, um, oral systemic connection, not the connection itself, we've talked a lot about that, but the mechanism of how what happens in the mouth can affect what happens in the body. Uh, the reason I wanna bring that up again is because I have something to add to that. Uh, I typically go through the three eyes, inflammation, injury, and uh, what are the three eyes? Uh, infection, injury, and inflammation. And I'll explain that. But I wanted to add one more mechanism. And again, I just want to always give you the connect all the dots. And I don't think I've ever in one place talked about all of them together because this new mechanism is is rather recent it's kind of a been a hot topic lately a topic lately it has to do with uh blood pressure and nitric oxide and and all that so i'm just going to kind of connect all of that and just go over the mechanism again um maybe i am doing this because uh i just uh, came back from a trip to la we did two podcasts down there drew pro uh, love spending time with him. We talked for over two hours uh, on oral health and uh, things you can do to promote good oral health, therefore good systemic health. And then also I met Max Lugavere of the Genius Life podcast. That was fun. And uh, we spoke for about an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, I think that may be a slightly younger audience. Again, it's just great to get this message out to as many people as possible. And this is why I do this. It's important to understand that you cannot be healthy overall if you haven't addressed oral health. And somehow we separated the two back in the 1800s, 1839 to be specific. Um, I, I just can't believe that we're still doing that. We have practitioners that work only in the mouth and then we have practitioners that work only in the body and the two are intimately involved. I would argue that actually oral health is a big contributor, one of the biggest and in some cases, the biggest to systemic health issues. And physicians don't really get this in school. And the dentists kind of are just doing their thing and worrying about, you know, uh, cavities and, and gum disease and really don't connect all the dots on how that, what they're seeing in the mouth could be related to rheumatoid arthritis, small uh, preterm births, um, Alzheimer's, et cetera. So anyway, I'll, I'll kind of talk about all that just in, in general, just to add, to, to kind of bring in all the potential mechanisms so we all know what is causing this. So uh, it's raining outside. I left the door open, uh, wanted to reduce the CO2 parts per million in my barn. Uh, I want to do a podcast on that and tell you what to buy, how to measure and what to do uh, in case your CO2 levels get higher. Uh, it's also great to have rain in the Bay Area here in Napa Valley. Um, it has been a very cool summer, which is greatly appreciated given all the, the history of wildfires that we've had in the last three or four years. Uh, here comes the rain, in fact, right now. I have a metal roof on the barn, so you may hear a little bit pitter patter. I love it. Uh, hopefully my producer, tells me uh, that it's okay and that I don't have to close uh, the door. Anyway, let's get right to it. Um, so the oral systemic connection, the mechanism, the, the three things that I've been talking about now for the last 10, 12 years, uh, the three eyes, that's how I remember it. Infection, injury, and inflammation. Let me just review those, talk about the fourth mechanism. Um, there are certainly going to be others. This is, again, new territory for healthcare sciences. We're just making these connections now. Uh, the, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the oral microbiome and why oral microbiome testing is so important given all these connections or mechanisms. Uh, and there's gonna be way more to talk about in the next one to five years in terms of how uh, oral health impacts um, systemic health, overall health. So, okay, let's talk about the first one, uh, oral infection, an infection in the mouth. Uh, you have a bacterium in the mouth that is causing uh, inflammation. It could be ulcerations, inflammation of the gums. 
let's use the classic example, the P. gingivalis bug. And it's not just that bug, it's many bugs, but P. P. gingivalis is the big player, hence the name gingivalis, gingiva, and the gums. Um, that if it is present in a abnormally high population uh, where it's comates, you know, all the other bugs, whether they're good bugs or bad bugs, I hate to assign that, uh, that classification of bugs. Bugs are really not necessarily bad or good, but certain bugs, if not modulated or or you know, modulated is the is is the best word, not controlled, but modulated, um, then they will cause uh, kind of a, a symptomology that is is uh, related to poor health, uh, like infection. So the P. gingivalis bug uh, runs amok, so to speak, and um, is not able to be modulated by its neighbors. This is probably due to the use of mouthwash, certain toothpaste, the concept of disinfecting the mouth, which really we know doesn't work, not nurturing the mouth, not feeding the mouth and the bugs, the oral microbiome. And then this bug becomes a big bully and the body responds by uh, with inflamed gums. Uh, the blood goes to the gums. Uh, it's a cytokine response uh, and there's an infection in the gums. And by the way, the surface area of that infected area is equal to uh, the 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 size of your palm, the square of this, the surface area of the size of your palm. So that's what a three by four inch circle. Think of that as a one sore. If you had that on your forearm or on your chest, that would be quite unsightly. It would be very painful, and it could get in, even more infected. And you could even, if it's not taken care of properly, you could even die from that infection. And that's what's going on in your mouth. Um, it's very difficult to visualize that, uh, e even as a dentist, certainly easier for us, but but think of that as being the surface area of exposed raw ulcerated tissue, and that tissue allows bacteria to pass through and past the barriers in the mouth to the bloodstream. So that P. gingivalis bug can get past that area and cause an infection. It gets into the bloodstream. It can, for example, it can do many things, but for example, it can get past the blood brain barrier and into the brain and cause the brain to react with inflammation. The immune system uh, will do some crazy things to prevent that P. gingivalis bug from taking hold, like laying down amyloid plaque. Uh, there are many, many other things. Uh, uh, mitochondria start dying off. Uh, the quality of mitochondria are affected myelin sheath, uh, neuronal development, uh, chromatin formation, all, all these things that are so important to the brain um, uh, are, are caused by the presence of this bug. Again, this bug shouldn't really be there. The P. gingivalis bug is always present in the mouth, but when things go wrong in the mouth then the the bug becomes very prominent and it's actually, to, to nuance that a little bit, it is a... Um, it is kind of like a, a subset. It is a, uh, it's a subtype. That's what it's called. It's a subtype of the P. gingivalis. And that subtype wouldn't really appear if things in the garden, the oral microbiome garden were doing well. In other words, it's like a weed. And it when it grows, it causes a lot of problems and it can outgrow all the good bacterias and, and bacteria and even the normal not the subtype, but the normal P. gingivalis bug and cause problems. And again, the immune system senses this and responds to it. So spread of oral infection gets into the bloodstream typically, and it we call this a transient bacteremia. Uh, that means that the bacteria are in the blood. And if you have a, an acute infection, it can happen within minutes. If you have a chronic infection, it's happening continually. And the systemically, the body can't take that over time. So, so that is the mechanism of infection. There's another mechanism called injury. Uh, that's systemic injury. In other words, a toxin of an oral pathogen, like the P. gingivalis, I'll stick with that just as to keep the example consistent. The It may not be the bug itself. It may be a remnant of the bug, like even a dead cell wall of the bug 
But when that gets into the bloodstream, or let's say it gets into the bloodstream as a as a live bug, it dies in the bloodstream, but the cell wall can set off the immune system. It can also uh, create inflammation, but it can also settle out, settle out on tissue like heart tissue in the brain and, and cause not infection, but injury to the tissue, to the organ. Uh, and then the last one is inflammation, systemic inflammation. It can be localized. It can be overall inflammation. It can be an elevated CRP, c protein uh, uh, index. Uh, in other words, your body's on fire and your, and your body's trying to fight this uh, inflammation. And this is caused by the soluble antigens of oral pathogens. In other words, it's, it's, it, it's the parts of the, of the, of the, um, of the bacterium. And when they are seen where they shouldn't be seen, like in the blood, in the bloodstream, uh, the body responds, the immune system responds, and you get this overall, uh, level of inflammation. So, so those are the three typical mechanisms. We've been running with that for quite a while. Um, there are a lot of studies that support it. It's still theoretical, uh, with a lot of good supporting data, but again, the body is so complex. It's very difficult to know how it actually works. The, the connection between the P. gingivalis bug and Alzheimer's after a long-term inflammation on the brain, that is well understood, not completely understood, but we are getting better at understanding how that works. And, and that would be that infection, that would be infection. That would be direct infection, maybe a little bit of the injury mechanism and certainly some of the inflammation mechanism, but as a, as a secondary effect. So anyway, it's, it's, um, it's scary to, to think that bugs in the mouth can have this effect on, on many organs, even your joints, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, uh, preterm birth and low birth weight. So if you're pregnant or thinking of conceiving, actually make sure that you don't, that you've addressed any form of inflammation in the mouth that can all be connected. Okay. So the, the new fourth, uh, mechanism, um, uh, and I've talked a lot about this. Uh, we talked a lot about it, uh, in the last two, um, uh, podcasts with Max and with Drew. Uh, it has now become very popular. We here at Ask the Dentist, we've talked about this connection between the lack of production of nitric oxide based on an oral dysbiosis of the oral microbiome. Uh, these are bugs on the back of the tongue that if they are not uh, nourished and kept in a uh, working commensal symbiotic state, uh, that they cannot produce this nitric oxide, which is great at lowering blood pressure. Uh, and by the way, this mechanism is key in, in those of us that are over age 40. We produce nitric oxide via many other mechanisms, but those wane as we get older. But thank goodness the oral microbiome is good in the latter uh, stages of our life if it's well taken care of. I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, uh, what, what that means. But but nitric oxide, which is this transient gas, it has a vasodilation effect. It also is a form, it's a prebiotic uh, that is formed by the body. So it is an endogenous prebiotic. So it helps the oral microbiome. Um, nitric oxide also uh, lowers oxidative stress. Uh, it's a, a very important substance in the body, but we need to be able to produce it. So with given the right diet, uh, nitrate to nitrite conversion can occur. Nitric oxide is formed. It only lasts for a few milliseconds. You have to keep this process going. You have to eat well. But if you're using mouthwash and killing the bacteria on the back of the tongue that, that do this, it's called the NO synthase pathway. Um, if you knock that down with a disinfecting mouthwash, which most mouthwashes do, um, then you are preventing, actually you're preventing the the production of nitric oxide, which eventually leads to within six to 12 days and elevation of blood pressure. Uh, kind of um, in, in addition to that, if if obviously stop using mouthwash, but if you were to scrape your tongue, you even you have an even better chance of keeping those bacteria that produce that help produce or support that NO synthase pathway um, by scraping your tongue, you keep those bacteria in good shape, the oral microbiome on the back of your tongue, 
and that allows that production to occur consistently and at its optimal level. So, so that is a mechanism for how oral health affects systemic health. It's kind of an indirect, it's not the classic, something gets into the bloodstream from an infection in the mouth, but it is a mechanism for how oral health relates to systemic health. And what I'm implying here is, and, and, and maybe you've already gotten it, is that a, if you don't take care of this oral microbiome, specifically this micro niche being on the back of the tongue, um, and especially if you're getting older and you're you know, past age 40 and you've lost the other mechanisms of being able to make nitric oxide, your blood pressure will go up. There's a causative relationship between the two. So, and that's why we have these studies. We've had them since 2008, 2009, where mouthwash uh, elevates your blood pressure. The use of mouthwash elevates your blood pressure. Uh, yes, I, I'm I'm not kidding. That is how it works. So, so take care of those oral uh, those bugs, those uh, that part of the oral microbiome that produces nitric oxide, and you will uh, receive many many good overall systemic benefits. So there they are, four mechanisms. I just had to add that last one or at least talk about it in conjunction with the three classic, the three eyes. And this is um, uh, important. Uh, we are going to see or talk about many other mechanisms. I'm sure of it. Uh, this information is only 15 years old. That's pretty new in the world of health sciences. And again, there's that rule that um, it takes about 10, 15, some will say 20 years for the latest information that you read about in studies to get to the clinician. So we're still, even this information, even though this information is 10, 15 years old, a lot of dentists really are not aware of this. A lot of physicians are not aware of this. So again, this is why I go on to podcasts. This is why I uh, provide CE for our directory of functional dentists, uh, which I'm gonna mention as I sign off here in a minute. Um, it's important that you get the latest information and it's wonderful that you're listening and, and that you have an interest in oral health because by listening to podcasts like this about oral health, you can go back in and talk to your dentist about this and, and be aware of it. So to end it, to end this episode, tongue scraping reverses one of the key mechanisms of how oral health affects systemic health. Scrape your tongue, throw away the mouthwash. Mouthwash is useless in any case. Rinsing with water can stabilize pH. Oil pulling can help stabilize pH, but it doesn't uh, do what we think. Well, it doesn't do what toothpaste does, what brushing does, and what flossing does, and what scraping does. It's a mechanical uh, kind of um, uh, method of disrupting the biofilm. You can't do that with swishing. It's just not strong enough. Now, if you swish with a bactericidal ingredient, which is what most, most mouthwash contains, uh, then on the surface area, yes, you are disinfecting some bugs, but you are also disrupting the oral microbiome. And when it comes back, which it does in 10, 15 minutes, Okay, you've gotten that little minty blast in your mouth and you run out of the house and you think you've got mini breath. Well, actually, by rinsing with the disinfecting type of mouthwashes, you're actually making your, your uh, mouth smell, your, your, your halitosis increases, your, your, your bad breath will become that much more prominent. Uh, mechanism there is that these bugs that are supposedly producing uh, the... Uh, it, the, the, the ones that are involved in that nitrate to nitrite um, uh, conversion, uh, if they are not doing well and being bombarded with disinfectants, bactericidal disinfectants, they start producing a different gas, ammonia, and then you get these sulfide bonds. And that's where you get that really weird fruity, uh, dead fruit kind of uh, smell. So, so don't fool yourself. Uh, that is one of the known mechanisms of how oral health can affect systemic health. And that's a perfect example. Use mouthwash or don't use mouthwash and have a thick layer on your tongue. You're not scraping your tongue and your blood pressure will elevate. So anyway, uh, speaking of a directory of dentists, uh, that 
list is growing. I got we 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 uh, received two new app, two new applications uh, today, and these are functional dentists that are aware of all this information. They can talk to you about it. They have solutions for it. They are they they are again after the fact after dental school. They are educated with continued education and just being curious about the mechanism of how oral health. Uh, uh, transcribes itself or or uh, leads to poor uh, systemic health. And that's the person you want to be seeing. Uh, that directory is at, at askthedentist.com slash directory. Uh, in the next episode, uh, lots of new questions coming in. Um, a lot of people are asking about what supplements I take, the ones that relate to oral health. So I'm going to go over that. Um, I'm going to compile my list, maybe pull out my little vitamin tub and, and talk about that. Um, it's a long list. I don't want to get too much into the weeds about that, but I think it'll be very, very helpful. We actually did a course, Dr. Stacy and I did a course and one of the modules on it was, uh, how to, what supplements to use for oral health and, uh, supplements are great, but if you're not scraping your tongue, supplements won't help. Of course. Uh, there's a supplement that helps NO production. I'll talk about that in some of the upcoming um, episodes, but let me just leave it at this. Uh, given the four, the four mechanisms of how oral health actually affects systemic health, uh, the easiest one to deal with or, or to address and, and take care of every day on a daily basis is to scrape your tongue. Scrape your tongue. Um, I think you will notice the difference right away. I will also do an episode, uh, a video episode of how to scrape your tongue, what to expect, what to do when you get blood on your tongue scraper, what's, what it's going to look like if you haven't scraped your tongue for a long time and what to expect. And then over time, uh, what the benefits will be. So I'll also get into that. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I appreciate your, 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 your interest in oral health. And I, I guarantee you that if you continue along this journey of educating yourself about oral health, uh, you will reap great benefits from it. Um, not just for oral health, obviously, but overall. Um, uh, one last point about nitric oxide is if you don't scrape your tongue and you're not producing a lot of nitric oxide, again, especially if you're over age 40, they're about as you're getting older, uh, all that exercise really will not have very much benefit for you. And maybe I'll talk more about that, that mechanism. So I'll end it there. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.